Timing, timing, timing. Timing is the main concern of the digital designer or a layout engineer who are designing a semiconductor chip. The design team of a large digital design may spend months or years architecting and iterating the design to achieve the required timing target. Besides the functional verification which we have discussed in earlier videos where we have discussed about emulation and all, the timing closure is the major milestone which dictates when a chip can be released to the semiconductor foundry or fabrication. It's that important in the IC design flow. If we are okay with timing, we are almost done. So in this video and in this series of videos, we will try to understand what is static timing analysis, how it is described and how do we verify it. So without wasting time, let's get started with the introduction to the static timing analysis. So what is timing analysis? Timing analysis refers to the analysis of the design for timing issues. So to understand what are timing issues, let's consider a very primitive example. Let's take an, an AND gate, right? It has two inputs A and B and the output is C. Consider both A is 1 and B is 1. Now the output of the AND gate is definitely 1. But remember, we are making an assumption that both of these inputs are simultaneously given to this AND gate, which will result into output 1. Now it may be true here. Let's take another example where we have a buffer in the path of the input A. Logically, this is still an AND gate, right? But just with the buffer. Now why did we introduce this buffer? Maybe this signal A is a weak signal. We wanted to boost this signal to the required voltage level. But the problem is this path now has higher resistance and capacitance due, due to the insertion of this extra buffer gate which will lead to a higher propagation delay in this path which means my input may not be one one simultaneously maybe this one has passed through and then this one arrives which will result into problems at the output so this is a simple combinational logic example but in digital design, there are sequential circuits where a global synchronous clock is controlling the data flow. It has to happen continuously, synchronously. Also, the frequency at which the computer chips operate today are at gigahertz level, which means in billionth of a second, data transfer has to happen. So it's very essential and it's an extremely complicated problem of solving the timing in today's integrated circuits. So when we say timing analysis, it could be of two things. One is static timing analysis, which we are going to discuss. And one more is timing simulation or also called as dynamic timing analysis. As we know, in timing simulation, we provide input stimulus. If there are two inputs for the logic, consider this AND gate A and B with all the possible inputs maybe 00011011 and see the output. If the output match the expected output, then okay, the functionality as well as the timing is okay for this uh, logic. That's how we go for timing simulation. But we know that this is an extremely slow process if we consider an extremely complex design. We will try to understand the difference between static timing analysis and dynamic timing analysis in another video, specific video. So static timing analysis is one of the many techniques to verify the timing of a digital design. An alternative one is timing simulation, as I said just now. So the static word means the analysis happens statically and does not depend on inputs, which means we are not supplying any input stimulus to the gates or any logic. Instead, we will use the lookup tables and the timing models and the delay calculators to estimate the timing pretty accurately. To give some examples of timing checks, setup and hold checks are two checks which are performed in static timing analysis. A setup check ensures that the data can arrive at a flip-flop within the given clock period. A hold check ensures that the data is held for at least minimum time so that there is no unexpected pass-through of data, which means that it ensures that the flip-flop captures the intended data properly. So two things are important. Data has to be transferred from one flip-flop to another flip-flop within one clock cycle. 
that's very important that's ensured by setup check and whole check ensures that there is no corruption of data I have another video on both of these setup and whole check I'll keep the link in the description so that you can go and watch and understand more about these two checks so given that a design with a set of input clock definitions and the definitions of the external environment the purpose of the static timing analysis is to validate if the design can operate at a rated speed so that's its main concern when we say rated speed you might have seen the chips saying it runs at 4.5 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz something like that and we ensure that speed the figure on the right which you can see is the static timing analysis flow where you can see this design under analysis which can be described in terms of Verilog format which is the netlist format that's what I have written here the gate level netlist and the external environment which includes the clock definitions and the constraints and the model of the external environment which could be different scenarios we will try to understand all these what are scenarios what are corners in upcoming videos when we say clock definition clock has its own property such as period of clock and its slew which is rise and fall the transition times of the clock and the duty cycle and the pulse width of it the external environment could also mean the input and output delay the constraints are usually specified in terms of SDC which, which means standard design constraints or de synopsis design constraints file it's a standard format in the industry static timing analysis can also take the input as a spef file and this is the golden timing analysis which happens before the timing closure because the real layout data of the real extracted data of resistance and capacitance are used in this timing analysis where a spef file where spef means standard parasitic extraction format along with all these inputs timing model library also has to be given and this is required basically for the cell delay calculations because the standard cell delays will be mentioned in the fo file format called liberty which is dot lib files I'm sure I'm sure that you are not understanding many terms that I'm using but in the upcoming videos we will try to understand all these in detail one of the most important aspect of static timing analysis is that the entire design is analyzed once and the required timing checks are performed for all possible paths and scenarios of the design as I said scenarios is nothing but my general purpose computing system may operate at different places at different temperatures in different conditions so it needs to work in all those conditions so those are classified into different scenarios and scenarios are again classified into corners we will understand those in detail in upcoming videos so why sta why is it important why don't we go for dynamic timing analysis for example so it is complete and exhaustive of all timing checks of a design if you take for example the timing simulation it depends on the input vectors if there are 100 inputs we need to take the combination of 100 inputs which is too many test vectors so we cannot completely cover the timing of the design if we go for the timing simulation uh, very quickly right it takes huge amount of time and the second one is it's much much faster than all the other timing analysis methods also we should note that in advanced technology nodes the design implementation must be verified to be robust which means it can withstand the noise without affecting the rated performance of the design and this can be done only by static timing analysis the other timing analysis methods will not allow this or does not support this and finally also the on chip variations and the pvt conditions which are process corner voltage and temperature variations can also be modeled and handled by sta which cannot be done by other timing methods these are the few examples of why we go for sta there are a huge amount of examples but i have listed one of the very important ones so this is why we go for static timing analysis for a very complex design instead of dynamic timing analysis or timing simulation or any other methods.
that's all for this video i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel bye bye